welcome to Mrs. Patnor's um, lesson one of this week, if you're watching them in groups of three. Um, we are going to go over some of the old sounds we already know. We're going to look at the two new sounds that we won't learn last week, and we're going to look at some tricky words as well, and do a little bit of writing too. So hopefully you've got a board and a pen ready, if not some paper. Okay, let's make a start the way we usually do with our flashcards. Now don't forget that some of these will contain the new phase five sounds of last week. So hopefully you can remember those. I'll come a little nearer with my flashcards to help you out. Okay, so the pink ones are the phase five ones, so the new ones that you've only just learned. So don't worry if they haven't sunk in just yet. Remember they often make the sounds that we've already recognised before, but just in a different way. Okay, so don't try looking for a brand new sound, but it is written in a different way at phase five. Okay, so our first one from last week is ow. And I have a new one is a. Another ow. Uh or oo. A. Sorry, these aren't as good as my laminated ones. Y. Yeah. J. Oi. R. E. Sh. Z. V. E. Or I or the z usually at the ends of words or the ends of syllables when there's two of them. Air er, one of our many ers. O ng qu x another er and this trigraph is er but mostly y then we're back to the beginning again okay so that was our phase three and a couple of our brand new phase five sounds Right, let's have a little look at our common exception words. Now, I won't do all the phase two and phase three ones because I think you're pretty much, you know, on with those. You know what you're doing with those. So I'm going to go over the phase four ones, which are the green ones, and also some of the phase five ones that we learned last week, okay? You wrote a couple of sentences and read a couple of sentences with these words in, so hopefully you might remember them. So this one is... Ho! Oh. If you want to pause the video at any point because you want to say it before me, then please do. And this one, poking your tongue out, the, and then making an air sound, there. Now, we already know it there, and you'll see it on the, on the phase three cards in a minute, but this one means when something belongs to them, okay? So it's their trousers or their rabbit. So it's spelt differently but sounds the same. This one, people, people. Now some phase four ones. That is one. What were so do out? Now we know it's not so tricky with the owl sound. Said little. When some have, which is easy to blend, just the et doing nothing. Like with our magic E, turning it to I. And our other, there, the air, but it meaning over there, or I live there. Come, which means, well, we've done some, quite possibly we have. Right, okay, so... I'm going to add a couple of new ones to these today. 
Now, these are more phase five common exception words, just two of them, okay? And I'm going to show you how to blend them to read them. So, this first one is ask. So, this is not too bad. It's not asked. You might say asked if you live further up the country. So, actually, there's many things that people say up north that make more sense when you're blending than they do as we speak more further down south. So, rather than asked, if you blend it as asked, then you'll then think, oh, we say asked, don't we? So, ask. And then kd, ask kd. You can't really hear the e. Eh. It's more like it goes straight from the k to the d. Ask d. You can't really he hear that e. Eh, okay, but you do pronounce the d on the end. All right. Asked. So when you've done done something in the past, you've already asked this question. Then you have e eh, d on the end of lots of words that have happened already in the past. Okay, you'll start to see those popping up more, particularly when you go into year one. And they often end in an e eh and a d or an e and a d. But they don't always sound the same way. So this one does have a d sound on the end, asked. But then if we look at this one, this is looked. It sounds like it's making a t sound at the end. So uh, uh, that's all fine. All right, so that's fine. It's all helping us. But then the et de, this time, when we say looked like it's happened in the past, it's already happened, so it's got an et de on the end. Looked sounds like a t sound, but it's still made with the et and de. So sometimes those words that, that mean we've done something in the past could sound like a t. Sometimes they sound like a d. But it's always made with the e, eh, d, so don't be popping a t on the end of looked, just because it sounds like it's there. Remember, it's tricky. So it's an e, eh, d, because you looked at something in the past. So helping you look, and then the k t sound is bouncing off of the k, and it sounds like a t, but it's always e, eh, d, when you're talking about those words in the past. Okay, so we have looked, and we have asked. Two new phase five words, and I'll be adding those to our pile for tomorrow. Right, okay. Now I want to move on and look at our new sound of the day. I'm going to come back over to you again. Our new sound of the day is going to be this one, okay? Now we looked at our new sound A last week, made with an A and a Y. This is made with an O and a Y, and this one is OI. Now we already know an OI, made with an O and an I. So they both start the same way, so that's quite helpful. You know, when you're writing an oi sound, it's always going to have an o at the beginning. But instead of an i, it has a y. Now this one, a bit like the a sound with the a and the y, normally comes at the ends of words or the ends of syllables. Okay? So if you're writing and you can hear the word or the sound oi at the end of a word, usually it will be the o y, our new one today. So try and remember that as a, as a rule. If it's oi as the last sound or the end of a syllable, the beat in a word, it'll probably be the o and the y. But I don't want you to go getting yourself worried about spelling the right one and getting yourself stressed out and stopping yourself from writing because of it. If you put one or the other, your teacher, I guarantee you, will be pleased that you are recognising the oi sound. But if you can remember at the ends of words or syllables, it's the o, y, then that will be fantastic. Now we're going to have a go at writing this in the air. So take your magic finger. Okay, and I'm going to go the same way as you guys, so as not to confuse you. Now, I do cursive in my class, remember, but just stick to the way you would normally do it with your teacher. But in my class, we would whoosh up with a cursive flick, come back round like we're drawing a curly curve, but then meet up at the top to form that circle, and then just do a little arm out at the top, like it's reaching out for the next letter. And then the y next to it, I'll whoosh up, come down with a smiley mouth, Come down again with an umbrella handle and loop through if I'm doing cursive. Have a go on your table now. Draw it on your table and then draw it on your carpet too if you're sitting on the carpet. So that is our new oi sound. Now we're going to take our lids of our pens and have a go at writing it on our boards. So I'm going to borrow this one. So I'm going to write, I'll do it with you over here. Remember, if you don't do cursive, don't give it a try because your teacher will not expect you to. So I'm going to cursively whoosh up to the top. Then I'm going to come back round. Look, it's like a curly cur. But then I'm going to go and meet up to make a circle. And then from the top, a little arm is going to come out like it's reaching out for the next letter. Then for my cursive, yeah, I whoosh up. Big smiley mouth. Down and loop through for my oi sound. So there it is, an o followed by a y for the oi sound. Okay, so that's your new one for today. Usually at the ends of words or the ends of syllables. Right, with that in mind, 
Can you have a go now at writing these words? Now they will have our new oi sounding, so think of the off ya, not the off it for today's words, okay? I wonder if you could have a go at writing a nice easy one to start with, boy. Can you have a go at writing boy? Pause the camera now if you want to, uh, so you can have a go at writing it, but now we're going to do it together. So, boy. I start with my b. In my class, we cursively wish up tall, come down, go back up about halfway, round, and tickle the belly of the b. Okay. Then, so that's our b for boy. So, b, oi is our other sound. So, I'm going to come up like I just did, like a curly cat, the alarm out, wash up for the y, smiley mouth, umbrella handle, and loop through. B, oi. Boy, a nice easy one to start off with. Right, now I'm going to ask you to have a go at writing the word enjoy. If you enjoy something and you really like doing it, enjoy. Have a go at pausing the video. Use your phoning flicky fingers for the first syllable N, okay, and then the second syllable joy. Tackle the first one first, second one afterwards. Don't get yourself in a huff over trying to do a word that's got two syllables do them one at a time. Right, now I'm going to do it with you. Enjoy. So the first syllable is N. Second syllable is joy. Let's tackle the N first. So N, two sounds in N. We hear an E and an N. So E, N for the N. Let's just make sure that goes through. N. And then the second syllable is joy. Joy. I can hear two sounds in joy. I hear J and the new oi sound on the end of the word and the end of the syllable as well, in fact. So I wash up, I come down, I loop through for my j, don't forget to dot it. And then I do my oi sound again, oh, followed by y, e, n, j, oi, n, joy. Give yourself a pat on the back if you spelt it properly. Now we're going to have a go at doing employ employ when someone gives you a job they employ you two syllables we'll tackle the first syllable first which is m then the second syllable ploy after that so pause the video now if you want to have a go writing yourself but now i'm going to do it with you so first syllable m there are two sounds in m e m so before it was n for enjoy now it's m with a m there and um, sorry so m and now we're going to do ploy there are two sounds very close together at the beginning of ploy so we're looking for three sounds in total what are they ploy we can hear the p what's really close to the p to make ploy ploy p oi so p oi there we go m Oi. And it's that sound at the end of the word and also the end of the syllable. So it's our new way of writing the oi sound. Employ. If you got that right, pat on the back again. Right, last one. Let's do annoy. When someone gets on your nerves, they annoy you. Annoy. Two syllables. An. Annoy. Two sounds in the first one. So have a go at writing it now and pause the video if you need to. I'm going to do it now with you. So first syllable, an. Two sounds, a and n. So that's our first syllable, an, and then we've got noi. Two sounds in noi, n, and the oi sound. There we go. A, n, n, oi, an, noi. There it is. Give yourself a pat on the back if you got that one right. Fantastic. Right, now before we finish up, we're going to have a go at reading a couple of sentences, okay? And they will contain the new oi sound. So I've got two for you to read and then one for you to write. I'm just going to fill that in because it's rubbing off a bit where I've been using the other side. Okay, so first of all, let's check this sentence out. Perfect punctuation, capital letter at the beginning, lovely finger spaces between my words, and it finishes with... A question mark. So we know it's a question, this sentence, and it needs an answer. Okay? So we could do a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you want to to answer the question. So here it is now. Pause the video if you want to read that without me going through it. But now I'm going to go for it with you. So our first word, a nice easy one, three sounds. K and can. 
Common exception word, helping you, being tricky. Yeah, ooh. Can you? We just wrote this word, in fact. Can you remember? An, an, oi, annoy. Can you annoy a b oi? Boy, can you annoy a boy? Yes, I imagine most boys would say yes. You can definitely annoy a boy. Right, that's our first sentence. Second one is this one. Pause the video if you want to read it yourself. I would really appreciate you doing that. Remember, if you need to blend the separate sounds, that is absolutely fine. But if you can move on now to blending it quickly in your head and saying it as a whole word, that will be fantastic. Right, let's tackle this together. Capital letter, excellent. Finger spaces, fantastic. And a question mark at the end. So it's a question and it needs an answer. We have got it will a... Two syllables in this. Let's tackle the first syllable and then worry about the last syllable on the end. So, r, and then today's sound. Oi, r, oi, all. R, oi, all. Will a royal, two syllables here, but you shouldn't recognise this, you've just wrote it. E, n, n, j, oi. There's our sound of the day again. Enjoy. Let's go back to the beginning. Will a royal enjoy? Two syllables here too. Oh, I've just realised that this word contains tomorrow's sound of the day. So I'm going to give you a hand with this one, otherwise you're going to look at it and think, what does that say? So this is our new sound, the e and the a are going to be making an e sound. So we already know an e sound without e and our e. In my class do donkey ears for the E when we make the sound. Well, et and a is also making an E sound. We'll tackle this tomorrow. But I'll give you a little heads up for it now. So we've got eat, eat, eating, eat, eating, eating. Will a royal enjoy eating an, two syllables, oh, sound of the day, oi, st, uh, oyster, uh, oyster. Will a royal enjoy eating an oyster? Hmm, I think somebody in the royal family would probably quite like eating an oyster. Why not? So I'd say yes to that. Lots of the oi sounds in there. Oi and oyster. Oi and enjoy. Oi and royal. So lots of opportunities to read the sound of the day. Okay. So I would like you to have a go at writing a sentence when the video has finished and your adult can check it out and see if you've done really well. It will be this sentence. Are you listening? Will it be annoying if a boy destroys a toy? So apologies to all boys. I'm not being, um, not being sexist towards boys here, it's just that I want to get that new oi sound in, okay? So apologies for saying that boys destroy toys, I'm sure girls do too. So your sentence again is, will it be annoying if a boy destroys a toy? So annoying is a three syllable word, so take your time, break it into its three syllables before you attempt to write it, don't rush it. So let's count the words in a sentence. Will it be annoying if a boy destroys a toy? Ten words in your sentence today, so I'm really pushing you today because I know you can do this to be ready for year one. Think about the new oi sound. That sentence only contains the new oi sound of the day. So whenever you hear the oi sound when you're trying to spell it, it's not the old o i sound, it will be the o i yeah, because it's always at the end of a word or the end of a syllable, okay? So, good luck with that. If it sounds too much to do 10 words, why don't you have a go at the three syllable word annoying? Give that a go. Um, or you can have a go at destroys, destroys. If you're finding the whole words tricky, Listen for the sounds you can hear, particularly the initial sounds, the first sounds, and then get your adults to fill in the ones you don't know. But try really hard to hear those sounds. That would be marvellous. Um, I hope you do fantastically with your sentences. If you do, give yourself a pat on the back from me. And I will see you again tomorrow to learn a new sound, the E sound, that we have briefly looked at today. Take care. Bye-bye.